tonight above all things. And Father, in these days when we're in troubled times, in these days when men's hearts are failing them and, and panic seems to be on every hand, we ask You, Lord, to look down upon us and may the Holy Spirit of God comfort us. We, be, we pray, Lord, tonight for those who could not be in church. We pray for those who will be watching on the Internet tonight. Pray for Brother Aaron as he teaches us God's Word. And Father, we just ask you tonight, we know you're in control. We know, Father, there is nothing that you cannot handle. And so we put this in your hands, ask you, God, to bless our leaders, bless our governor, bless our president, bless those that are behind them. And Father, if it be thy will, may we quickly and uh, very shortly find a solution to this virus. But Father, we thank you that we can come to our people by the way of internet tonight and ask that you bless each one that's listening in, and we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome you to our service tonight. We're glad that you've tuned in. We hope that you have, and perhaps if you have, you can press a button and uh, let us know about it uh, there. Uh, we know these are difficult times. There's no doubt about that. And sounds like it's going to get more difficult until it gets better. I just want to say this briefly before Brother Aaron comes and begins to teach us God's lesson. On Wednesday night, we have a Bible study and prayer. And Brother Aaron, our associate pastor, teaches the Word of God on Wednesday night to our people. And that's what he's going to be doing uh, tonight uh, on it. But before he comes, I would just like to say a few words, uh, maybe uh, kind of bring you up to speed where we are, uh, where we're going, and this type of thing uh, there. Uh, on it. Uh, we were going to be, we will be live streaming our Sunday services. Brother Aaron will be teaching the Bible class at 9.30 a.m. I will be preaching the morning message at 10.30 a.m. And Brother Jan Linderman will be bringing the evening message at 6 p.m. So we will be having services Sunday. And you may not be with us physically, but we pray that you'll be with us spiritually and we want you to know that we're praying for our people uh there everyone and we're so grateful at this point as far as we know no one in our church is sick or even has any symptoms of this virus and we're very thankful for that uh, on it there on it just before i turn it over to brother Aaron, i as pastor could not <laughs> pass this up but we do want to remind you this is april and if you have not and would see fit to uh, send your tithes and your offerings and your mission gifts uh, this month, we got to keep up our missionaries. We got to meet the need there as well as the expenses of the church. You can send them. Uh, we've had it on on Facebook. You can send them at my address, two zero three five seven Peachland Boulevard, Port Charlotte, Florida three three nine five four, and Brother Jan will get them immediately but we're glad you're with us tonight and we pray that you will receive a blessing and we know you will if you'll open your bibles open your heart open your ears and let god speak to you through god's man brother aaron come and bless us tonight if you will Hey, um, <clears throat> good evening. Um, we uh, are going to run our format a little different um, as far as our lesson tonight. Um, I'm going to try to stay in the confines of time of a normal church service on a Wednesday night. Um, tonight, I, I, normally, I normally start by reading a passage of Scripture first, but tonight I'm going to pray first and then I'm going to read God's word. So if you would, please, let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity in the greatest nation on earth, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity and the freedom that we have to preach your word. Lord, we don't always know how long we do have, and that freedom can be taken away. Lord, I ask now tonight that your Holy Spirit would move through those that are listening online. 
Lord, I ask that it would be your words tonight and not mine or mine opinion. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would use me to touch the hearts and convict the hearts of those out there in attendance tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I came up with the idea for a lesson based upon the events of this past month. Um, the title of my lesson or series, I know a lot of people don't like to hear the term series. The title is March Madness, March Madness. And it's not what you think. Most people attribute March Madness to the college basketball tournament. I'm going to attribute it to the kind of madness that we faced this entire month of March. In March, all of our sporting events were canceled. Nations have shut down their doors and their borders. Thousands have died, and the worst may be yet to come, and even for America. Since we were cheated out of a March Madness, and hearing from Dick Vitale, if he's still alive, um, I'm going to give you what I believe God's March Madness or his bracket would look like. And it's not really going to look like what you may think it's going to look like. Or maybe many of you already know where I'm going with this. But I believe if God were to have a bracket and it were not to be collegiate, it would be a bracket of things that would draw the world to either repent and turn or to continue until he returns. There's only two options here, and make no mistake, God will be crowned the champ. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about what I would consider, and if you know anything about the brackets, I used to almost worship college basketball to an extent of idolatry. Idolatry is going to be in our lesson tonight, but if you were to take the bracket, and if you don't even know a lot about sports, about the, the college, uh, the NCAA bracket or the field of 64. I don't even know. It's, it's like probably the field of 100 now. But there are always number one seeds. And there are four regions that these number one seeds come from. So tonight I want to talk about why I believe this number one seed that God has and why he's mad at the world today is going to be our East seed and our overall number one seed. It's not North Carolina. It's not Duke. It's not the usual suspects in college basketball tonight. Tonight, the number one seed in the world tonight is abortion. Abortion is the number one seed. Killing our own seed has reached the top of the list in my mind. You wonder why the world's in madness in the month of March, going now into April, it's because we slaughter the unborn. Make no mistake, we slaughter the unborn. I chose this as the overwhelming number one seed because I believe it is. I believe it is. Tonight in New York City, you can't go to church, but you can still get an abortion. Did you know that? You go to church and you meet in a group in a church building. Even in Tampa, I heard a pastor was arrested this past weekend. You can be arrested for going to church, but you can walk right in and have an abortion tonight. Let's turn in our Bibles to 2 Kings for the reading of our text tonight. And I do believe when I'm done with tonight's lesson, you will also agree that abortion is the number one seed, the killing of our seed. You will also know that God is not happy with this. And he has, there has to be an answer for this. I came up with other seeds in the bracket of my mind as I was at work. I have a very vivid imagination. <clears throat> I came up with number one seeds. This one topped the list. Oh, there's more seeds out there. There's more things that have made God's list, but I believe this is number one. Starting in 2 Kings chapter number 17, 
chapter 17 of 2 Kings. 2 Kings 17, verse number 9. Verse number 9. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burn incense in all the high places as did the heathen whom the Lord God, Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols whereof the Lord has said unto them, ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets." Now, I want you to notice in verse number 13, preachers and pastors and teachers in America and around the world have been crying out to the people of not just America, but around the world. The good Christian people have cried out saying, spare the little children. Any real man is going to try to defend the innocent and those that are less or have less strength than he does. Pastors in verse number 13 have cried out telling people to turn from their wicked ways, turn from the evil of the nation. But yet in America today, and I'm going to use America as the number one example, only because we've slaughtered 60 million babies since Roe versus Wade uh, ran into our Supreme Court. And make no mistake, when it ran into the Supreme Court, it should have ran into a brick wall, but it didn't. It did not run into a brick wall. But I want you to notice something tonight. God commanded through the preaching for people to obey his word or his law. <clears throat> Verse number 14, notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the necks of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. Now, I want you to notice something tonight. Usually before somebody goes and has an abortion, they usually harden their neck or their heart. They have to. Someone has to be hurt. Something has to take place for someone to go to that extreme. Hold your place in 2 Kings and go to Proverbs chapter number 29. Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. If you turn right in your Bible past the book of Psalms, you'll find the book of Proverbs, chapter number 29. Proverbs 29. Verse number one, the Bible reads, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When a nation hardens its heart and hardens its neck, it could face destruction and that there will be no remedy. Verse number two, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. This is a call for every politician in the United States of America to stop abortion. To stop abortion. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. I could preach a whole sermon about our politics on that verse alone, but I won't tonight. The king by judgment established the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spread forth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous does sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth 
not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. But verse number 10, after all this, the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Listen to me tonight. We need to give the gospel to those that are getting ready to go in and give an abortion because they're going to walk into a bloodthirsty doctor's office and they're going to go talk and counsel with someone who doesn't care about them and someone that hates them. They hate the upright. They hate the normal person. And we, as the just, need to seek that person's soul before they enter the doors of that abortion clinic. But make no mistake... If you've listened to many of the things that um, Planned Parenthood has said and been caught on film talking about how they talk about removing the babies out of the womb, how they, dis uh, how they take them apart and remove them piece by piece. They're bloodthirsty. They're bloodthirsty. <clears throat> the bloodthirsty have always taken the lives of the unborn or the innocent or the babies. Keeping your place in 2 Kings, go to Exodus chapter number 2. The slaughter of children, innocent children, is nothing new in God's word. See, what you have to understand is we are created in the image of God. In the uh, image of God... He created them, male and female, or he created them, male and female. We're created in God's image, so Satan hates us. The fallen angels hate us. And at this time, Pharaoh doesn't know Joseph. Joseph's gone into Egypt to save his people. And in verse number 17, the Bible picks up because they've got a commandment from Pharaoh to kill all the men, the baby men that are born, the men, child, children. Verse 17, but the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. Amen. Somebody wasn't afraid to stand up regardless of what they were told. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men, children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered, ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dwelt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. I want to say something right now. If you make a stand against abortion, you may look like the odd man out. You may look like the odd person out, but God will bless you for the stance you make, just like he blessed these midwives. They went against the leadership. They went against the king, and they did what God wanted them to do. And that was save the babies. Verse 22, and Pharaoh charged all his people, all the Egyptians, saying, every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. See, the devil's always tried to kill men. He's doing it right now. He's made men, you know, you can't even say anything manly today. They call it toxic masculinity. Men are taught not to be men anymore. Satan's been trying to destroy men since the garden. And now he's trying to wipe them out in this passage as well. And now he's destroyed. I wonder how many men could be in our workforce today if they were only allowed to have been born. I wonder how many daughters would have been born and how many more grandchildren many of us Americans would have and how many more, uh, instead of making all these, these uh, wicked places like bars and nightclubs that people go to, how many more parks and how many more family centers could we have if we had a population of 60 million more children in the world and in America today, what would it be like? One thing's for sure, we wouldn't have had to outsource all of our jobs to China. And we wouldn't have had to outsource them to other countries because we wouldn't have killed an entire workforce. 
Turn back to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 17. <clears throat> Verse 14. They, but they are necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. See, these people don't believe in God. These people that are behind the abortion clinics. These people that are behind the sale of these baby body parts and different things. These people that are behind it, they don't believe in God. Verse 15, and they rejected his statutes. Well, first off, they had to know he had statutes. You think these people that are passing legislation to destroy children have never heard what God said about children? They've rejected it. And his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were around about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. I want you to notice the more things change, the more they stay the same. People are vain today and they're empty today and they're shallow today and they'll kill their own child today because it's convenient today. They've destroyed the sanctity of life. Turn to Romans chapter 1. Hold your place in 2 Kings. We will be back because we're not even to the meat of this subject yet. Romans chapter 1 in your New Testament. Romans 1. Let's see if this sounds anything like what we just read. Romans 1 verse number 18. Because make no mistake, God's going to pour out wrath on a bloodthirsty people. This is why abortion's the number one seed in my bracket that God will judge. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know his statutes. They know what he said not to do. And they hold the truth, but they don't hold it the right way. They hold it in unrighteousness, not righteousness unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath shown it them. Hey, what did Jesus say in John chapter one? This is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. But like pastor said in his sermon, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. There are bloodthirsty people out there tonight. And make no mistake, they know why God's shown it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, that includes us human beings. Even his eternal power in Godhead, so they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Fools. They were vain. Vain. They set up idols. And that's what's wrong with America today. We've set up too many idols in our heart. I'm glad all the sports were canceled. And every Christian man should have taken advantage of that and got in the Word of God and got on their knees and prayed. Maybe we should take a fast from sports once a year in honor of God. I'm not against sports. I loved playing them. I, I talked about a baseball game my brother and I played in. I enjoy playing sports, not so much now that I'm older because I'm terrible at it. But, but I'll say this, sports have become idolatrous. They've become idolatrous. <clears throat> It 
See, we've become a very vain and empty and selfish type of people. You know, I'm just going to go off topic briefly for a second. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, the Bible says, This know also, in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Bible says because they became selfish, then it says they're covetous. They covet idols. They covet money. It says right here in in Romans chapter 1, they were unthankful. Neither were they thankful. And in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says unthankful, unholy, disobedient to parents. But it also says without natural affection. That could mean a whole lot of things. Because it's not natural for a mother to go into an abortion clinic and allow somebody to tear that baby out of their body. It's not a natural affection. I, I, I am going to throw this out there. If, if you have had an abortion, God will forgive you. I don't want you to turn this sermon off because you may feel some conviction over it. God has, God has restored many people in the Bible that have committed murder, adultery, fornication, drunkenness. They've stolen. You know, God will forgive you, but my message tonight is not geared at the individual. It's geared at the nation that allows it. And I know there are many good Christian people right now sitting at home and they're sick of it as much as I am. And they want to see a change take place. So turn back to 2 Kings chapter number 17. 2 Kings chapter number 17. Hopefully you held your place there. Verse 17 reads, And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. You know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may have sold yourself into sin, but you personally can be redeemed. You personally. But I'm talking about the nation tonight that allows this to happen. One of the big arguments is, is they're really not children in the womb. That's one of the big arguments. But you know what? <clears throat> Let's see what God has to say about that. Let's turn to Psalm. Hold your place in 2 Kings. Turn to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. I want you to notice a few things here. I want you to notice what God has to say concerning the womb and the unborn child that's in it. Psalm 139 Psalm 139, verse number 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Sounds like there's a human being in there. Verse 14, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. <clears throat> Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect or incomplete. And in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. You telling me God didn't make us human beings? What's the Bible say? Hey, Christian, you better be able to defend this against those that say that we were just some goo before we actually came out of the womb. And, and I'm going to say one other thing tonight too. Hey, they started with ripping kids out of the womb, and now they'll kill them after they've been born. See, there's no end to this March Madness. There's no end to this. 
Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. Ecclesiastes chapter number 11. This is King Solomon, who was David's son. I wonder where he learned the importance of the sanctity of life. Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse number 5. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Not goo, not a fish, not a dog, not a cat, but a child, a human child. Even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Even though they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. That's what it says. They can't understand it. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. I'm just going to nail down tonight whether or not this is a human being in the womb. Verse number 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Look, Young man, young woman tonight, if you've made that mistake and you've gone on and you've got regrets, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. He'll lift you up. He'll lift you up. He'll forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's what the Bible says. But then once you've been cleansed of that unrighteousness and your sin has been separated as far as the east is from the west, then get in the fight. Get in the fight and get mad at the deception that Satan has fed those and try to stop others from following down that same road. Because verse number 16 says, For I will not contend forever, ever, neither will I always be, neither will I be always wroth, for the spirit should fail before me in the souls which I have made. Hmm. Wonder if God creates people. I have made Jeremiah chapter number one, Jeremiah chapter number one. This has probably been preached more than any of them. And I've heard this one most on the radio. Jeremiah one is right after the book of Isaiah. Turn right in your Bible to Jeremiah chapter one, verse number five, before I formed thee in the belly, hmm, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordain thee a prophet unto nations. Now he's talking about ordaining Jeremiah, but before each one of us is born in the womb, he knew you. And he still allowed you to be born and make a choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose life. Choose life. Zechariah chapter number 12. Zechariah 12, Zechariah 12, verse number one. The burden of the Lord for Israel. Sayeth the Lord which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. You know why Jesus loves the little children? Because after he created heaven and earth right here in Zechariah 12, number one, Jehovah's Witness, he then created you. He then created you. For by him were all things made in heaven and in earth. And he loves you and he wants you to get out of that wicked religion. You should get out of all wicked religions. God has made each one of us and we are a people. And Satan has deceived us because he hates us and he wants to destroy God's creation. He hates humanity with a passion. He doesn't want to be friends with the people that worship him. He hates them. And now tonight, if you didn't know, you've been warned. You no longer have to hold in 2 Kings 17, but I'm going to take you down a few passages of Scripture tonight for the next 10 minutes because I want you to see what God's warned people about over the centuries and how they've continued to disobey him. And America and the world right now is no different. 
Turn to Leviticus chapter number 18. Leviticus 18. See, it had to start somewhere in God's Word, right? A lot of people try to stay away from Leviticus. <clears throat> it's a pretty convicting book. There's some things that are difficult to read in there. Some things that are more difficult to understand. You know, God God knew this, this might be an issue. So in Leviticus chapter number 18, verse number 21, God sends out a warning to the Israelites. He says in verse 21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord or the name of thy God. I am the Lord. You know, it's profaning God when you destroy his creation. And he created every human being. And I know there's some sitting there at home tonight, maybe ridiculing the fact and saying, well, we're not passing them through the fire to Moloch. Well, Moloch is the devil. And if you're going to terminate the life in you because it's not convenient or because you don't have enough money, you're passing your seed through the fire to worship the devil, vanity, emptiness, and selfishness. And to set up a graven image of your heart, which puts you at the top. So if you do that, you are sacrificing your child to Moloch. No man can have two masters. He'll love one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon or money. Deuteronomy chapter number 12. Make no mistake, passing your child through the fire is abortion because it's still the shedding of innocent blood. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse number 29, When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Verse 31. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord, which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters have they burnt in the fire to their gods. What thing soever I commanded you observe to do it, thou shalt not add thereto nor diminish from it. That's what the Bible says. See, they hold the truth and unrighteousness. Just like in 2 Kings chapter number 17, they knew what they weren't supposed to do. The book of Deuteronomy was not hidden from them. Turn to Psalm 106. Psalm 106. This is our Wednesday night Bible study. So there's going to be a little bit of Bible here at the end. Psalm 106. Christian, I want you to get strong tonight in the Word of God. Verse number 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood. Even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto, idol, unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a whoring with their own inventions. Hmm. Vain imaginations, their own inventions. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They tell you they want to cut up a baby so they can stick the baby's stem cells in your old decrepit body instead of you just being thankful that you have the grace of God, you're still alive, you want to terminate children for science, and you want to cut them up and experiment on them with your vain imaginations. And I'm sick of it. Sick of it. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. Let me tell you something. God is not happy tonight. When New York has shut down churches and the abortion clinics are open, 
Shame on that governor. He runs for president by some weird chance because Joe Biden's handicapped. You, I'll tell you right now, you better not vote for that man. Jeremiah chapter 19. I'll say it. I don't even care. Come get me. Come get me. Jeremiah chapter number 19, verse number 2. And go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. Hmm, they're about to get another warning. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth, his ears shall tingle. I'm so sick of ear tickling preachers. These guys came and they tickled their ears the right way. Their ears are tingling because he's yelling at them like I'm yelling tonight. Verse number four, because they have forsaken me and, and have estranged this place and have burned incense unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. God didn't tell them to do this. They did it on their own. Ezekiel chapter number 20. Go right in your Bible. Ezekiel chapter number 20. Hey, I'm going to nail home tonight. Abortion is something that God can't stand. Ezekiel 20, verse number 24. Because they had not executed my judgments, because they held the truth and unrighteousness, because they knew His commandments, they knew His statutes, but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts in that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb that I might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Hey, maybe this coronavirus is God trying to get the attention of the world. I don't know. But I'll tell you this right now, abortion's the number one seed in my bracket of things God hates and what God's going to rain down judgment for. You, I, I hear so many people, is this the end? I don't know. But I'll tell you this, if you start filling out your bracket of what you think God hates, we're getting closer every day because there's a lot of things that are going on in the world that God hates. And I'm just nailing the number one seed down. Turn to chapter number 23. Chapter number 23. Verse number 37. <clears throat> that they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands and with their idols they have committed adultery and have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire. To devour them. You know, I hear this all the time. Hey, uh, you know, it's my choice. Uh, you're saying the same thing that they said. You're sacrificing your own children for yourself. Whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire. Hey, just be thankful your mom and dad didn't abort you to devour them. Verse 38, Moreover this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slain their children to idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus they have done in the midst of my house. What they do? They thought, you know, it's no big deal. Now listen here, Christian. You can get right with God. But don't just despise God's law and God's commandments. Do it and act like nothing's wrong and you didn't make a mistake. Because you did. Amos chapter number one. Amos chapter one, number one. It's one of the minor prophets 
in the Old Testament. Amos 1, I'm going to read it for the sake of time. I've got a couple minutes left. Amos 1.13, the Bible reads, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Amnon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child of Gilead, that they may enlarge their border. You know why people get abortions? Because they are told they can't afford to have a child. And let me tell you something right now. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your paths. But make no mistake, depart from evil and do good. Because if you do the right thing, God's going to bless you. Period. Even if you're not saved and you keep from having that abortion, just the simple fact that you've just not profaned the word of God, God, God will honor that. Now, obviously, I want you to get saved. That's not what I'm saying. You should get saved. Matter of fact, that's my plea for everyone to get saved. And God's plea is that he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But you know what? Just like, just like any number one seed, they are vulnerable to defeat. Every number one seed can be taken down. And through the history of basketball tournaments, the number one seed has often lost the big game. So let me show you how to take down a number one seed. And make no mistake, I believe we only have one shot at this, at this time in history. Ezekiel chapter number 23, Ezekiel 23. We can take down this number one seed but there's a way to do it. I will do these things in verse number 30, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their idols. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister, therefore will I give the cup into thine hand. The truth is, if we stop going after these idols and we stop worrying about all the money we need to make and we stop putting things before the Lord and we quit going a whoring after the heathen and all those wicked people that want to just rip children out of the womb, if we stop going after those things, we can turn this around. We can turn America around. Second Chronicles 714 says, if my people who are called by my name, my people, the people of God, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then shall they hear from heaven and I shall heal their land. You know, God can heal our land if we take down this number one seed. And I believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, this and a few of the other grievous things that are going on in America today, if we can somehow, as Christians, get in the battle and go after these things, and we fight these things, and we take them down, God may restore our land and we may be able to have a stay of God's judgment for several generations. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm up here preaching tonight and teaching the word of God because I have children. And one day I hope to have grandchildren and hope they, if the Lord tarries, I have great grandchildren. And many of you out there tonight have the same things. And I'll tell you what, money can't hug you. Money doesn't look down, money doesn't look up to you, I'm sorry, look up to you with their arms stretched forth for you to pick them up. Money doesn't do that. 
Your idol doesn't do that. Whatever you've put in the place of the Lord tonight does not love you. God loves you. And children, they just, you know, little children, they love for no reason. Jesus said, suffer not the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not. Jesus loves the little children. And so does any God-fearing Christian should love the little children of the world. Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Let's take down this number one seed of abortion tonight. We need to make sure that every Christian, while they're sitting at home doing nothing, while they're sheltering in place, watching television, they need to write a letter to everyone and flood Washington, D.C., Tallahassee, flood New York with letters. Flood every Democrat in the United States of America with a piece of your mind. Email them. Call them. Plug up their phone lines. Tell them you're sick of this and you're going to bring it down. Let's not just get so greedy that we go off to work and we forget about this thing and that we take it down. Let's pray. When we do pray here, I am going to pray for a few of our church members tonight because they're going through some valleys. They know who they are if they're listening online tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm just thankful that you've given us this forum, this opportunity to come out and speak against this wickedness, that we may heal and save this land. Let a revival start in our hearts tonight, a revival of drawing back America to the godly nation it once was, where we knew the statutes of your word and and your word took preeminence in our lives. There's nothing on TV worth watching. Lord, convict the hearts of those tonight that they would just turn it off and pick up this book and they'd get in it and fall back in love with you. Let them fall back in love And then they'll do the first works, according to Revelation chapter 2. Lord, help each one of us convict our hearts that we would love you more and that we would pray and bring others to the throne of grace like we are tonight. Lord, one of our members has a brother named David up north, and they'd love to see him. He has thyroid cancer, inoperable. He's up in years, and it is something that he may not survive from. Lord, I ask that you comfort him. Lord, I don't know if he's saved or not. But Lord, if he is, give him the peace that passes all understanding. Give him an opportunity to talk a little bit more about Jesus before he meets you. Oh, Lord, if he's not saved. Lord, for the sake of the family that we love here in our church, the people we care so much about, the sweet spirit that those members have, their true love For this brother, oh, Lord, send a soul winner for their sakes that he would lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ or that she would lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would be saved. Oh, Lord, tonight we have many members like Miriam who has trouble breathing. I'm so glad we decided to postpone our church services for the members that we have here that are a little older and they have sickness and health issues like Miriam, I mean, Marion and Fran and Harry and all those, Lord, there's so many. Lord, Florida does have a population of people that are retired. The demographic is different than anywhere in America. Lord, be with them. They're faithful. They love you. They're hard. They're hard to take down and keep out of the house of God They, and serving God. They've gone soul winning. Brother Harry's gone with me many times when he physically should not have. Lord, I ask that you would uh, meet the need that Brother David had, Lord. I don't want to name too many names online, but he had needs for those that are sick, people he cares about deeply. And if I were honest tonight, and you were too, the people out there, Lord, we all have someone that we know needs the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. 
And we know safe people that are going through the valley right now as they may have lost their job, may have lost their ability to take care of their family, and they're afraid. Lord, meet with them tonight. Love on them tonight. Show them something out of your word that would encourage them. Help them to put aside things and, and to just draw closer to you and rely on you. Lord, I just ask that you be with the members of our church. So many names and faces have popped into my mind as I pray. Lord, be with each and every one of them. Pastor and I love them dearly, and we want to protect them, and we would if we could. So, Lord, I ask that you rear up a hedge, protect this church and the people of it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor wants to say something? Yeah. I just want to thank Brother Aaron for a tremendous message that was needed in this hour as never before. I also want to remind you, tune in Sunday morning, 930, for another good Bible lesson, and then 1030 for preaching. Uh, <clears throat> we are an old-fashioned, independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, King James-only Baptist church. Amen. Amen. We don't make any apology for that. If you're looking for a good church that is friendly, spirit-filled, uh, a wonderful group of people, we hope when this virus is over, you will visit us and get acquainted with us. God bless you for listening tonight. May the Lord bless you, watch over you, keep you safe until we meet, meet again. God bless you. Amen.